If they run in their mouth, then they looking for trouble. Ran right up in the knowledge. Now they back in the huddle. Now they know we can fight. Content giving every week. Uh. Me and Dr. Rick. Uh. Keep on bringing the heat. Uh. Now they know that we hit. Uh. And hmm. they know we ain't quitting. Yo, she mind the jeans. Keep on bringing the giving. Unity, unity, unity. Uh. Cause they know we ain't stopping. Uh. And they know they got problems. Uh. And they ran out of options. Cause uh. we know we got a problem. Can't let it go unsolved. Uh. Brain breaks learning. Afrocentric history. We seen them all. Uh. Karma is karma. FBAB1, yeah. I've not cursed. I've not defiled. I've not confounded truth. I've not been patient. I've not cursed to God. What up, doe? What up, doe? What up, doe? <laughs> hey, what's happening, family? Today I got the genius with me, Yoshi Mod. And uh, yeah. what's up? Uh, go travel abroad. You go with your bad self, gal. <laughs> what's that? What's hey, that? Great so far. Uh, Cordzo, how you doing? J oh, JP, love you, love you. You know, welcome to the uh, show. As I told you guys last week, I'm no longer uh, going to be on Reverend Matthew's platform. I'm here. And the reason I'm here is because the fact is this is that we got to move forward. We got to get things popping. Today, I invited the genius because we're going to be doing a show. We're going to be doing a program every Sunday, beginning uh, this January 7th. And on this uh, program is going to be called Then and Now. Then and Now. And uh, you're going to have uh, two brothers there. That's going to be me, the then. And Yoshi going to be the now. He's going to break it down. We're going to talk about interesting stuff. Jocelyn, how you doing? I hope that you guys will join us. That introduction, you know, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's a super... <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know I mean? That's what I feel like. Whenever I, whenever I play my theme song, it made me just get so excited. It made me just want to just get started. It made me want to get things going and popping up. Mm -hmm. yeah. See? Oh, that's right. But again, uh, you want to introduce yourself to the people, Yoshi? The What's up? I'm Yoshi Ma, the genius. Y'all heard me from all over. Y'all heard me on platform after platform. I'm here with Dr. Clyde Winters. We about to get into it. Man, we have a whole lot coming to y'all. 
I encourage y'all to tune in 24-7. Every week we got something for y'all. Every week we're going to have an amazing subject, amazing topic that's for us, catered to us, by us, for us, only for us. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, I couldn't do this. You know, I've been trying, I've been, I've been, I've been having a headache. I've been having a headache. All the folks keep saying, Dr. Winters, Dr. Winters, we want to know what's going on. I said, mm -hmm. damn, I'm going to tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to tell you that's going on is that we're going to try to bring news to you guys. We're going to talk about some uh, current events. We're going to talk about different things that relate to the then, me, and the now, you see? Me. And uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to uh, we want to be able, in a sense, to make sure that everybody that everybody can be able to learn stuff because we're going to learn stuff. Today, mm -hmm. I'm talking about black music, and what I want to do is I want to uh, show you how how our music originated, and then uh, you know uh, Yoshi Mod is going to come back on, and he's going to uh, break down uh, what he thinks about uh, music and stuff like that, you know, because you know, we've been played, you know. Mm -hmm. It's never never in the history, never in the history of uh, of, of mankind have, have we ever, have we ever, in a sense, went through a, a program in which we've kept a certain musical form for this many years. No, we have never kept it for this many years. You know, we had we had jazz, we had hip hop, we had all this stuff. And you know, hip hop has lasted for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. 40 years, see. And the reason that, it, that it's lasted so long is because of the fact that people have been using this. They've been using hip hop, they've been using hip hop as a way, they've been using hip hop as a way in a sense to try to, you know, lead us down the uh, a path that is not really a proper path for us. You see, because what they've done is that they've made us keep on this musical form and this musical form they turned it around, you know. Hip hop, when it started, when hip hop started, it was a musical form that was about protest. It was about, about you know, real brothers, real sisters talking about life, life in the hood. Voicing your time, experience, yeah. Right, right. But over time, it changed, you know. Mm -hmm. And as it as it changed, as it changed, we're gonna do a real good show on uh, on popular music on uh, one of our uh, Sunday night shows. 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. But you know, hip hop, they've been using that because they've been trying to use that, the status quo, to try to destroy us. And see, mm -hmm. the reason that they're out to destroy us is because they don't want us to be us. They know in a sense that we're the uh, that we're in a sense the movers and shakers of the world. They know that this culture, that this culture in a sense is, is based upon our culture, because American culture is our culture, you see. But they, they've been telling us a lie about history. And what we have to understand is just like Nelly Fuller said, you see, they do things for maximum confusion. What do I mean? What I mean is this, is that often, often you can see a brother or sister and you can see them and you may think that that brother or sister is really down with the, uh, down with the program, that this brother or sister is really black conscious. This brother or sister, you may feel, is really is really uh you know uh dealing with my and and my mafia and uh, thought mm. but a lot of times but a lot of times in a sense that's not true you know they're just fakers and it's a lot of fakers in this world you know i don't believe in being a faker if if you find me to be a hypocrite then i gotta i gotta get down but the Straight point up. is that is that you have to start to understand that sometimes a brother sometimes a sister they don't even know, they don't even know that they're being exploited. See, they don't even know that they're being exploited. They really think, they really think that they're on top of the world and that because they're on top of the world in a sense, that they're really teaching blackness when in a way they could have been co-opted because they're suffering from caves. So many people suffer from caves. Culturally acquired immune deficiency syndrome, you see. Culturally acquired immune deficiency syndrome. You see, this stuff, this stuff will tear you down. This stuff will destroy you. But uh, let me, I'm going to do the presentation. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to uh, get this party started.
Okay, uh, this uh, this uh, is about uh, why white people steal uh, black music. But one thing uh, that's very interesting is that a lot of people are upset. And a lot of people are upset because of the fact in the sense that they've, uh, they've heard about this woman, uh, uh, Dr. Claudine Gay, being, uh, being in a sense, uh, had to resign as the president of Harvard. Let me explain to you. This was just a trick, you see. As I talked to you guys a couple of weeks when I, when I, uh, when I talked about leave the world behind, and I told you that it was a plan, it was a plan by those in power to take away, to take, knock FBAs out of the picture and replace FBAs with, uh, with people, you know, that were immigrants of the, uh, the children of immigrants. For example, uh, Claudine Gay is a Haitian, you know, and, and, and they knew. Let me explain to you. I taught at Governor State University for 10 years. You know, what I would do is, is that whenever, whenever we would go through a process, whenever we would go through a process of, uh, of, of, of reading uh, student papers, we had a program and I could put the student's paper into the program. And this uh, program, what it would do is that this program would tell me if the student had ple plagiarized any book article on the internet. Let me tell you. They knew Claudine Gay was, in a sense, had plagiarized, you see. But they wanted to make her president because they knew that they were going to make her an example and that eventually she was going to fail. Yes, she was going to fail in that position because they knew that she had stole work. And do you know what? She had the nerve. She had the nerve to steal the work of a professor called Carol Miller Swine. Carol Miller, Miller Swain is an FBA political scientist. She's uh, retired now, but she taught at, at Vanderbilt Law School and Political Science Department. Do you know that Gay stole and plagiarized her work and, and took entire passages from her book and put it in her dissertation? Yes, she stole this sister's work, but she thought that she could get away with this because of the fact that, that she said, oh, that's a black woman. You know, I'm because of the, the fact that white folks are uh, white folks are supporting me. I can get away with this stuff. You know, she even got an award for her dissertation. And you know damn well when I got when I uh, when I wrote my dissertation, I know that they checked it out to make sure that I didn't plagiarize anything. So they knew she had plagiarized. But what they wanted to do is that they wanted to make her a first, just like the first Supreme Court justice. Uh, she's a uh, you know she's in a sense a person. Of, of non FBA descent. You know, the, the spokesman for uh, President Biden is also of non FBA descent. In other words, they're trying to replace us. But again, just as in the case of Claudine Gay, you may want to, you may want to be on top. But if you're going to have to steal another sister's work and then you don't even want to cite her, no, I don't feel sorry for her. See, they knew. But they put her in that position because they was going to make her fail eventually anyway. Uh, why why uh, white people steal black music? As you can see in this picture, you can see brothers in a sense playing drums. You can see brother, uh, brothers playing uh, very, very uh, uh, many uh, brass instruments. They're playing the, uh, the violin. They're playing the guitar. You know, when we look at these things, we say, damn, how did these black people get these instruments? Why do we want to have this music? Why is music so important to us? Yes, it is important, you see? And that's why today I'm gonna to talk to you about why white people steal black music. You know, this is a beautiful thing that was done by the, uh, the genius Yoshi Mott. Again, in a sense, uh, he, he's, he's made me look uh, maybe 10 years younger. Oh, baby! I did, my mustache did used to look like that. Go to my Patreon to see the slides. You can go to Twitter, uh, Cl Dr. Clyde Winters 8. You can follow me. Also at TikTok.com at Clyde Winters 3. Go there and look at my shorts. I've got, uh, you know, I've got shorts. And I, I think the last time I looked is about uh, 590,000 views of, of the various shorts I have there. Many of them were done by, uh, by Q on uh, Let's Talk 2 and also by, uh, by uh, Yoshi Mod. So I appreciate what they've done. Uh, but you can go there to uh, uh, TikTok and look at my views. Find out some of the things that I'm working on. Uh, you can, uh, you're here on my website. This is uh, Clyde Winner's YouTube videos. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe today. You know, join my, uh, my uh, you know, uh, YouTube uh, page. 
You can order my books at Amazon.com. You know, two books in a sense that can help you understand more about Black music is that you can get my uh, Black History Gym essays, Volume 1 and Volume 2. These books can break down much of the history of uh, Blacks in the Americas. B1 is acknowledging your Black African ancestry and mod, not heritage. We must be race men and women proud of our culture and African ancestry. What is FBA? FBA is not a group. FBA is not an organization. FBA is a lineage. A lineage is lineal descent from an ancestor, ancestry or pedigree. As a result, we are descendants of the African and Aboriginal Blacks who built the United States. Yes, yes, we are unique people. Another unique people are foundational Black Britons. And many other foundational Black Britons are, are, are in the Caribbean. But sadly, many of our Caribbean brothers and sisters, uh, because of the fact, in a sense, that they've been brainwashed, they don't really have, have, have respect for themselves. They're always looking. They feel that the only way you can be successful is to be light-skinned. And that's sad. But that's because of the fact, in a sense, that we don't have any riders. We don't have any brothers and sisters in the Caribbean really doing their history, see? But luckily, we got sisters like Sister Shanice and other people in Britain, in the UK, that are now researching that history, and they're going to bring that history back to uh, to 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 uh, our cousins in our cousins in the Caribbean, and they are our cousins. Our group so our group self interest is B one Black first. White people steal Black music because they have no culture. Yes. White people have no culture. And because they have no culture, they're always trying to piggyback on our culture. And they steal various aspects of our culture so they can pretend that by having that culture, that they too are important, that they too, in a sense, have a, an established place. And they don't have an established place because they lack any culture. FBA history is a study of a great past. Music is the manifestation of Gagut. Gagut. The formula for Gagat is G-I-J, J equals zero. This is the fundamental complex formula that solves all other equations with infallible truth. Yes, yes, Gagut. This is, in a sense, the formula that defines the universe. You see, G-I-J, comma, J equals zero. That means the God Almighty, the grand unification theory. That's Gagat. You see, the God Almighty Grand University Universe Unification Theory. Gagat. It was proposed by Professor Oyibo. It unifies all known, known forces. Professor Gabriel Aoudou Oyibo was born in 1950 in Koga State, Nigeria. He is the man who, who discovered that everything in the universe is in order and the manifestation of God, Amon. G represents God. I represents God's material dimension. J equals God's space-time dimension. The comma represents a change or divergence. G-I-J, comma, J equal O is the infallible mathematical proof that the change in amma is zero. I, I, amma does not change. Your God doesn't change, see? And when you understand God, when you understand this theory, then you understand that everything is in order. You see, but the Europeans, they don't teach you everything is in order. They teach you that everything is in chaos. God originated life from Africa. Thus, Af Afrogen, God's first creation, is the originator of everything. The Oyibo theorem states that all elements of the universe are controlled by God's spirit, thus proving the existence of a God. Pursuant to this theorem, the first man was African since it was Africa where man and chemistry were born. Thusly, all matters in the universe are generated from the nuclear compound, hydrogen, which he calls Afrogen. Afrogen is the originator of every other element. For example, carbon has six Afrogen units, while oxygen has eight. As a result, black lives matter because matter is black, Afrogen. I got is not a new concept. Gagat has been a major focus of the musical creativity of foundation of Black Americans. Music has played a very important part in Black lives. 
FBA have used music as a major communicative vehicle with the universe and creator. That equals Amma. The FBA focused on music as a means to find oneness with God and his universe was not a new phenomenon. The ancient Egyptian scenes in temples and tombs show musicians playing strings and drums with women singing songs in praise of deities. Many elite women had titles such as Chantress of Amun Amma, demonstrating the importance of music and the religious traditions associated with adoration and worship of the gods. Yes, yes. That's one of the reasons that if you really look into to black music among foundational black Americans, you find that, that black music has always been associated with the church, the temple or whatever. You see, because it was in the temple, it was in the church that, that many of our, of our most famous, uh, you know, our musical talents of the entertainment world, that these people had their first knowledge and teaching about how to perform, you know, singing or e even using musical instruments. In ancient Egypt, music had the power to maintain universal order and grant immortal life by appealing to various gods to act on behalf of people, both in life and in death. To the FBA, music is an integral part of creation and connection with Amma, you see. Egyptian term for musical act of instruments. The sistrum shaked as a, as a noise. The sistrum arch, shum. The civil hummed or vet. Vet. The, mem the membrane phones, large barrel shaped drums, com com, hum hum. The round tambourine, sir. The, the aerial phones or the long flute, mit, mit. The double clarinet, mimet. The trumpet, sinab. The choral phones and the harps. That. So as you can see, many of the uh, various instruments that we associate with foundational Black Americans and, and mainly Black people in Africa, Black people, wherever they live in the world, these many of these instruments were first used, you see, by our Egyptian ancestors. And what you have to understand is that e ancient Egypt was a pan-African civilization. Canada was pan-African. What I mean by pan-African is that when you look at the various nomades or sepats, each one of these cities along the Nile had a different ethnic group. Many of these ethnic groups, in a sense, after the decline of Egypt, migrated into West Africa, you see. That's one of the reasons. And other ones migrated into Southern Africa and Central Africa. Because, see, as these populations moved out of the, out of the uh, Nile Valley, they began to, sp to spread this culture. And they carried this culture throughout Africa because Kamet, was a pan-African civilization. It was a civilization made up of many different groups of African people. You see? And now we can see in this illustration, here we see, see a woman playing strings. We see the sitar, the harp. Yes, yes, yes. These are not new. See? These are not, not new. It, it, is it any wonder that some of our greatest musicians, isn't any wonder that some of the most, the most, Musical people are African females. And the reason that they're African females is because of the fact, in a sense, is that that often, often it's our it's our goddesses, it's our it's our holy women who are able, in a sense, to bring forth from the gods this intimate feeling, this knowledge that you can only get from music and get from Emma. Our music comes from our genetic memory of our Egyptian heritage, you see. Here we can here we see in a sense, you know, uh, some pictures of ancient Egyptians. Yes, ancient Egyptians, ancient Egyptians. You know, ain't none new under the sun. This is from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes three fifteen. That which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. Look, look, look. Here's pictures of in a sense ancient Egyptians. There's a picture of an ancient Egyptian that looks like Obama. Another one that looks like you know Michelle. And then our holy philosopher, our great mystic, our symbol of truth, our symbol of love, Michael Jackson. Look, there's a picture of Michael Jackson. Well, the black Michael Jackson. But anyway, Michael Jackson, baby. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. They came at this time because they're in another incarnation. 
But see, God is great. God is wonderful. God is showing us that even though we experience these people in our lifetime, thank you, Emma, these people had come before because see, God doesn't lie. Time is relative in relation to music. You see, remember that video? Remember the time when, when we had Michael Jackson and these other characters, you know, playing out a time in ancient Egypt, a beautiful thing. And then Sun Ra. Sun Ra, one of our greatest uh, musicians, many of his songs, in a sense, were based on that Egyptian theme because, see, we're able to go to the Akasic records. And when we go to the Akasic records, we're able to bring down knowledge because God has that knowledge out there for us to find. God has that knowledge out there for us to hold. God has that knowledge out there for us to possess if we want the knowledge. We are taught a fake history of enslavement in the U.S. We've been taught that we all came from Africa. We've been taught in the sense that since we all came from Africa, we should look towards Africa as our, as our home, you see. But that was a lie. They wanted us to look towards Africa because of the fact, in a sense, they didn't want you to have any connection to the land, see. The European came over here. He was an immigrant. He was a colonizer. He settled this land. But see, this land is our land. It's a land of, of foundational Black Americans, and they can't stand that. So they've always tried to teach us the lie, the lie that we're solely Africans. That doesn't mean that some of us didn't come from Africa. But see, all of us did not come from Africa. In the United States, there was a different organization of the slave plantation. You had master, the white overseer, and the Negro driver. Thusly, the driver might administer punch, punishment upon their fellow slaves, but it was clear to the rest of the slaves he was forced to administer the punishment. Very important. This arrangement resulted from the fact that the chattel slave in the USA began as an, an aboriginal people defeated in war by the settlers or black Irish and Scotsmen defeated in war after 1649 in Scotland and Ireland by Oliver Cromwell. As a result, the slave master could not count on aboriginal and Baradanac slaves to punish their kinsmen. Yes, yes, we're POWs. See, I'd understand, see. The European has never wanted you to understand that you have an Aboriginal heritage and that you have a Black Irish heritage, see. All they teach you about is these white Irish that came over after the uh, potato famine and that these white Irish, you know, they suffer so much. They didn't suffer shit because they had whiteness, sis, 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 sis. And because they had whiteness, they already had a million dollars because that's all they needed. But the Black Irish, they came over here as chattel slaves, chattel slaves. Chattel means property, personal property. Large number of Black Irish slaves were sold in the Caribbean slavery and the 13 colonies. For example, 50,000 Black Irish slaves a year were sold into slavery in the New World between 1652 and 1656. Cromwell and the Bristol merchants sold 100,000 Irish children as slaves in Virginia and New England. Yes, 100,000 children, 100,000 black children were sent over here to be slaves because, see, they wanted them to be slaves because they felt, in a sense, that if they could bring these black people over here to be slaves, there would be slaves for perpetuity. Perpetuity, that means forever. You know, the black Irish were either exterminated by the English or sold into slavery. In the proclamation of 1625, we find, in a sense, that King Charles sent 30,000 black Irish prisoners into chattel slavery in Barbados, Montserrat, St. Kitts, Lucia, and the 13 colonies of North America. Yes, they sent many of those slaves in North Carolina and Virginia. Other Irish slaves were sent to Guyana in 1629, Antigua and Montserrat in 1652. By 1637, listen to this. By 1637, 69% of the inhabitants of Montserrat were Black Irish. This is important. Why is it important? It's important to understand that many Black Irish came over here as chattel slaves. Because, see, when you understand that many Black Irish came over here as chattel slaves, it helps you to understand the musical traditions of FBA. These are Irish were sent over here by Oliver Cromwell. And Oliver Cromwell was an English general. As you can see, Oliver Cromwell, he's always been, he, 
He went about massacring black people. Here's a woodcut from uh, 1649. And in this woodcut, you can see, I didn't make it up. This is a woodcut that goes back to the uh, 1600s. And as you can see, you see these black Irish women, you know, as their babies are being thrown into the river or the lake by these uh, by these uh, these white Englishmen. Yes, yes, they hated you. They hate you because you're black. You see, but they also hated them not only because they were black, because Oliver Cromwell was black, but they hated them because they were Catholics. That's one of the reasons that I don't I don't uh, subscribe to any religion. I don't say I belong to any religion. I am a believer in God. You know, the other day I was talking to my daughter and she said, hey, Pops, what if they start to say they're going to kill all the believers? Well, I guess we're in trouble. But you see, religions can cause problems, you see. But, you know, we've all found nothing except in America except public, public, you know, uh, humiliation. You know, they would take our women. Sometimes they would ra rape them if they could. They would beat the men, you see. Sometimes they rape, rape the men, too. But they specialize. Europeans have always specialized in beating our women. For some reason, Europeans feel that they can beat our women, if they can hurt our women, that that is a good way to, to check us, a good way to, in a sense, you know, let us know that we're powerless. And it is powerless because, see, when you can't con protect your wife, when you can't protect your daughter, that does give them a lot of power, you see. But they felt, in a sense, that if they could destroy our women, they could destroy our uniqueness. You already saw, you already saw, you already saw that what? The ancient Egyptians, they saw this strong relationship between Egyptian women and God, Amma. Do you understand what that means? See, the European understands that too. The European knows that there's an intimate relationship between the black woman and God. Therefore, in a sense, they wanted to try to hurt our women. They wanted to try to destroy our women. They wanted to break their consciousness. They wanted to break them. Because they understood that it's the black woman who carries our history. It's the black woman who teaches our children. Therefore, in a sense, if you could break the black woman, then you could, in a sense, control the family. But I'm glad to say that they usually couldn't break a sister. She fought back, you see. Sometimes when a European, you know, they always talk about three slave rebellions. There was 250, 250 slave rebellions. They don't tell you that. They don't, they don't tell you that often that if a white man raped a sister, sometimes she'd come back and put glass in his food. Glass! Or poison him. They don't tell you that. We did not accept humiliation. We did not accept a beat down. We always fought back. Foundational black Americans are not cowards. On, that's why on the plantation, they always make sure that when you enter the plantation, you either saw the heads of black men on a pole or you saw a black man who had a, who had a spike nailed from, his, nailed from his ass all the way up and come out his mouth because they wanted to let you know that these plantations were about terror. I know you may have saw in Roots, and when you looked at Roots, you saw all the brothers and sisters having nice clothes, dancing, you know, fiddler, fiddler playing his fiddle. Oh, yeah, we love the old plantation. He has all that beat our ass. Hell no. The plantation was a place of terror. terror. Music is more than entertainment for FBA. In music, we look at what? Tone. We look at the melody. We look at the harmony between the instruments and sing, singing. We also feel the, ryth the rhythm. It's very important to understand that music produces a sense of being. Yes. Music produces a sense of being. The Egyptian word for music is haset, meaning song, singer, musician, conductor, and to play music. That's because of the fact that when you deal with music, when you hear music, when you sing music, it deals with your emotions. It deals with your feelings. It, dance, it deals with a moving and dance. When a sister hear that drum beat, she's going to move, see? She's going to move. She's going to move because that, that, that drum... That drum has an emotional effect on us because that drum gives us rhythm. You know, we can make songs that can make you want to go fight a war. We can make songs that make you want to fall in love. And they know what they're doing. Yes, music is important. Europeans use music to produce what? Base behavior, chaos behavior, fear, anger, and fantasy. You see, 
for example, we find today that the number one, the number one rap song today is a song by uh, Sexy Red. And then this song, Sexy Red says some vulgar things that little girls are going around singing now. And what does she say? My pussy pink, my booty brown. That is so illiterate. That is so stupid. But see, that's because of the fact that Europeans have been able to take hip hop and to use our music to produce base behavior. They want our children to feel that those are things that they should think about, you see? They want us to be engaged in things that have no constructiveness. What did Neely Fuller tell us? Neely Fuller said that we must do things that are constructive so that we can build our society. We can keep ourselves based on moving forward instead of falling behind. But first frequency people, black people, what do we do? We use music to produce joy. We, pr we produce music to make order. We produce music to make stability and wonder. Love, unity, freestyle. And most of all, our music is centered towards God. Yes, yes. Until, until Europeans took hip hop and they started, they started encouraging hip hop artists to be first gangster rappers, then, then hip hop. Look at most many of the uh, hip hop singers back in the day. They made a name of themselves they started representing alcoholic beverages. Now they not only deal with alcoholic beverages, they also want to send proper lines, the use of various drugs, fentanyl and things like that, that are killing our people, harming our people, you see? That music that we have today, that they're celebrating, given a 50th anniversary, that music is being rejected by most black people. Most black people are going back to our soul music. They're going back to the music of the 80s and the 90s. Because the fact is, this is they want to see music that helps them to want to have joy, to feel in love, to have unity, and sometimes to be freestyle. They want to regain that consciousness, you know, because what? What? Music represents nature. Nature represents life. Jazz represents nature. Jazz is life. That's what Sonny Rowland said, see? That's what Sonny Rowland said. Our music is more important than just to create chaos as Europeans do. Our great scholar and wisdom teacher, Nelly Fuller Jr., what has he taught us? If you do not understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. What else, did, what else did Nelly Fuller teach us? He taught us that we were prisoners of war. And when you look at history, when you examine history, when you do research, the purpose for studying Black history is not to find out how great you were. It is to find out what mistakes were made that put us in this current situation. Yes. Yes. You have to be about constructiveness. That's why I'm doing this video because I want to look at black music and I want us to really examine it and really to discuss it because see, Europeans, they want to create two things, maximum confusion and they want to keep us stupid. And the way they keep, it, keep us stupid is by using deception and violence. You see, they trick us. They'll take, they'll take things that we create and then they'll flip the script. For example, the, the case with rap. Rap came when rap began Rap was, in a sense, a dynamic music used to build up black people, to create a feeling of, of black pride. You know, one of the uh, one of the first songs. Let's go back to uh to to to, to James Brown. I'm black and I'm proud. Did it? Did it? Did, did say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Do you see that? See, they had to fight those images. See, and how do they fight those images now? Because they control rap. They have all these rappers, in a sense, mumble rappers talking about getting high, killing each other. Many of these mumble rappers have to sign contracts and then they die. And when they die, you know, the, the recording and the recording uh, company has an, uh, has an insurance policy. They make money off their death. And see, that's because of the fact in the sense is that rap has become, rap music is not constructive anymore. Rap music is not really for black people. Rap music is in a sense to destroy us because as Nelly Fuller said, they play both sides of the issue to always stay in control. 
POWs love their music. You see, one of our earliest forms of music was the blue. There was the blues music. Music played a very important part in the African lives so, since it was a way of life. Furthermore, the most popular instruments they loved were what? The drum, the rattle. You see, the bass. And that's why we see doing, doing, doing in a sense. Slavery times, we see black people playing the fiddle, black people playing the drums or, or, or beating on something, kids enjoying it, and kids dancing. Yes, yes, yes. This is not a negative. Music has never been a negative for us because we constantly made music. We made country music, gospel music, then country music. Then after country music, we made, in a sense, the blues. Then after the blues, we made rap music, and not rap music, but jazz. Then after jazz, in a sense, we made soul music. You see how these musical genres was changing over a period of years, and yet none of these genres lasted 50 years. And the reason that rap has lasted 50 years was not for our benefit. The reason that 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 rap has lasted for 50 years was not to highlight and build up foundational Black Americans. Rap is popularized today because the music industry, which is controlled by none, foundational Black Americans, use it to keep us down, use it to destroy our communities, use us to use it to create chaos and disorder. FBA music is unique. Is a combination of Black Irish, African, and Aboriginal roots. FBA culture is, is Sahelian dominant and different from Afro Caribbean, Afro Latin music. FBA music isn't polyrhythmic, heavy like that which is found among other people in the African diaspora, but mostly derived from the solo, string, and wind based, heavily Muslim influenced styles of Upper West Africa. Sudanic, Sahelian region. Yeah, yes. See, much of, much of our musical form, because of the fact that you had to remember that in America, most of the slaves or the, uh, the, the enslaved people came from what we call the Senegambia. That's the upper part of West Africa. This was, this was a Muslim area in West Africa. And because many of these people came from, came from in a sense, the Sahelian region, they have a musical, FBA people have a musical form that's different from the form of music in Latin America because many of the uh, many of the slave many of the enslaved people that came to Latin America from Africa mainly came in a sense from maybe uh, Ghana, Nigeria. So we find in a sense that that much many of their rhythms, many of their rhythms in a sense go back to that experience whereas the the, the musical tradition of foundational black Americans is more Sahelian, more Saharan, you see. You know, more slaves came from this region in Africa to North America than any other place in the New World. Due to the cotton, rice, and cattle culture and the landscape of North America, the slaves from the specific region in Africa were said to be more for the type of, uh, of labor to be done. Remember, in a sense, nor, uh, when they brought uh, pe Black people to North America, when they brought these black people to North America, what they did is this. They didn't bring people from Africa or bring people in a sense, you know, Aboriginal people and make them slaves because they were dumb. They had specific requirements and they were going after specific people who had specific skills. And these skills included growing cotton. These skills included in a sense, uh, growing rice, but it also included people who were, who were, who were mechanics. People in a sense who knew how to be blacksmiths. People who knew how to do brick work, iron work. Yes, yes. They brought skilled people here. Why do you think? They didn't just bring people here to work in the fields. Why do you think that FBA people are so unique? Why do you think we have this unique relationship with culture? We have this unique relationship with science. It's because of the fact that, that, that those enslaved people, Aboriginal people, Black Irish people, Sahelian people, or, or, or sub-Saharan African people. These people came over here, they were skilled. They didn't just put us in the fields. They're the people who designed the big house on the plantation. Not only did they design the big house on the plantation, it was usually those, uh, those enslaved people that built the damn big house. Think about it. They did not bring dummies here. 
FBA, FBA music is unique. It is a combination of Black, Irish, African, and Aboriginal roots. When you look, when you look at Europe, uh, before the uh, before the uh, the uh, the Civil War between the uh, Catholics and the Protestants, you find that Black people were in mostly all the bands. Look at that uh, picture on the uh, left hand side. They played all type of uh, instruments. You know, wind instruments, brass instruments. Between 1630 and 1660, 300,000 Black Irish were sold as chattel slaves to work on the farms and plantations in the 13 colonies and the Caribbean. These Black slaves included many musicians. On September 25th, 1650, there was a proclamation issued by Armode against Tories and Wolves. The Catholic priests, schoolmasters, and, men, and minstrels were put in the same category as wolves. Yes, when they talked about wolves, they're talking about black people. When they're talking about Tories, you know, they're talking about the black Catholics, you see. In 1654, as a result, harpers, pipers, and wandering musicians came to the 13 colonies as slaves. This is how FBA became familiar with so-called European instruments. Yes, look over there. You see that, see that brother playing, play, playing that, uh, that brass instrument? You see that other brother in a sense playing a guitar or a fiddle or a violin. We did not, we already had those talents. We didn't get those talents from the white man. Our ancestors, our black Irish, they brought those instruments with them. Or they didn't bring them with them, they bought them when they got here. That's why we have such a musical talent. Have you ever noticed? When, when you look at when you look at when you look at uh, a black at black people until 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 white people took over rap, most of the black music was very intricate. Most of the uh, black soul music, uh, the black jazz, it always used more, uh, a combination of instruments. It used in a sense wind instruments. It used in a sense percussion instruments. It used in a sense string in, in, uh, instruments. You see, but no, they liked rap music because rap music could make a synthetic beat. And you, in a sense, could also have people just, just having lyrics instead of, in a sense, music. Foundational Black American music is characterized by a, a richness of the musical form, a richness of the instruments used in that music. That music today that they call rap, that's why people are turning away from it. That's why people don't, in a sense, want to really get that type of music. They're going back to soul music. They're going back to the music of the 90s and the music of the 60s. Why? Because that music reflects the FBA culture. And that's why if you notice that most of the rappers are there making most of their money off of whites and Latinos. Foundational Black Americans do not go along with that music because we have a rich tradition of music. We have a tradition of music that goes back hundreds of years. I tell you that on the plantation, the majority of people on the plantation was Black Irish and Aboriginals, the only chattel slaves between 1625 and 1670 were Aboriginals or Black Indians and Black Irish. Yes, yes. You see, William Mays Grad and Flood in the history of Irish music noted that no words can adequately describe the horrors of the Cromwellian rule from 1650 to 1660. The pages of Pittergast, Gilbert, and Moran supply sickening details of that dreadful period as regards music. It is a commonplace of history that the Puritans, those were the uh, Protestants, that the Puritans destroyed all the organs in the churches. Protestants as well as Catholics regarding them as savoring of popery. They also broke all the harps they could find as a contemporary writer. Archdeacon Lynch, Lynch states, in fact, to such an extent was the heartbreaking mania carried that Lynch was of the opinion that within a short time, scarce a single instrument would have been left in Ireland. Yes, yes, you see that. Haven't you ever wondered why, why Black people have always been so a, a, a student churches playing those uh, organs? That's because we were playing those organs over there in, uh, over there in, uh, in Europe, you know? I sent this article to Marie Antoinette to let her know that, that when she's playing that harp, 
That's a long tradition of black people playing harps. Not just black people play, playing, playing harps in Egypt, but black people also playing harps before they came over here as chattel slaves. See? You have to understand that our musical traditions go back hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. FBA music is unique. It is a combination of African and Aboriginal roots. A lot of people tend to have this ignorant misconception that just because there's not a heavy percussion based polyrhythmic aspect in North American foundational Black American music, that it is not African, but European influence, which isn't true in the slightest. Africa is a huge continent in which there's not only one type of music cluster or style. The majority of our musical influences come from the upper West African, Sahil and Sudanic savanna regions of Africa, which utilizes a lot more simplistic crossbeat rhythms, which gives American music its swing feel, ba -ba 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 -ba, to accentuate the highly melosomatic wind and string instruments with a booming vocal instrument harmony. All aspects of foundational Black American music, while Afro-Cubans take the majority of their influences from lower West African and Central African Bantu music, which is very polyrhythmic and percussion-based. So you understand is that, as I said, when you understand that over 300,000 Black Irish adults and 100,000 Black Irish children were sent to the New World between, 16, between 1625 and 16, 1670, you understand in a sense why there's that so-called European influence. That so-called European influence did not come from white Europeans. We know they have no rhythm. It came from those Black Irish chattel slaves. See, I just read to you what they did, how they, how they tried to strip the musical traditions of the Black Irish, and they sent them over here. And when they sent them to North America, they brought that style here. That is why we have such a unique music. That's why we are so inventive. That's why we, in a sense, have a musical form that the whole world loves because it's not based upon just African. It's not based upon just Black European. It's not based upon Aboriginal. It's based upon, in a sense, a, con a, a combination of all of it. You see, there was an ethnogenesis. Yes, there was an ethnogenesis among, in a sense, those Black people who are descendants of slaves because it was on those plantations where Black Irish, Aboriginal people, and Sub-Saharan African people all mixed, all made it. That's why we have this beautiful musical culture. That's why we have this beautiful history of music, you see. There are cultural features with unified Black people around the world. Tanya Alpernam, she sent me this back in the day. On Facebook, it's brought to my attention the reality that Black people around the world use the same drums from Africa to Polynesia and the Americas. These drums are called slit drums and log drums. Okay, here you can look at a log drum up in Papua New Guinea, you see. These drums that were, that were in a sense, used in Papua New Guinea are also drums that are found in other parts of the world. Here we can see some uh, some uh, Indians at Martha Vineyard. Well, you know, Aboriginal Black people. You can see them beating their drums. You can see their feathers, you know. And see, these people, in a sense, today, to make, today Martha's uh, Vineyard and Chappaquiddick in Massachusetts is a playground for the rich, you know, for the rich and famous. But back in the day, this was a Black, foundational Black American Indian village. And they took their land. They took their culture. European, you can see those Europeans in the background. First, they would listen to the music. Soon they took the land from them because, see, they're always stealing from us. They always want our culture. They hate us because they ain't us. You see, here you can see uh, some of the drums. Here's some black Indians. These are, uh, these are I think, were Yuchi. I think they're Yuchis. These are people, these are Yuchi people that lived in North Carolina and Virginia. And you can see them playing the drums. And they would sometimes ho hollow out an entire tree. And they would hollow out that tree and they would make it into a drum. Yes, yes. Because this is what we do. This is how we, uh, we work together. Many of these drums probably came here in ancient times, especially during the Mali Empire. Here you can see West African drums. You can see the long drum. 
And you see that these same drums appear what? They appear in America. Why? Because there's always been continuity. I think I think uh, Dr. Marie Charles calls it first sight consciousness. And this is this first sight consciousness that unify us in culture. Because as I said, we can always draw information, always draw knowledge from the from the uh, Akashic records. Here you can see a drum. Here you can see drums in a sense. These are Mayan drums. See, Mayan drums. What Maya? The real name of the Mayas was Ma Shika. Ma Shika means Lords of the Black Land. Yes, Ma Shika means Lord of the Black Land. These were the these were in a sense were Mayan people and also Aztecs. Here's some other uh, drums from Latin America. So you can see this this continuity between between African, Polynesian, and American drums. It's just one big culture. Here you can see, here's a Yoruba frame drum. This is a drum that the Yoruba use today. And then on the uh, right-hand side, you can see a comedian frame drum. See? Continuity in culture, continuity in music. Here's a comedian tar drum. And there's an, uh, there's an uh, FBA uh, Aboriginal uh, frame drum. Yes, yes. The same drums made in ancient Egypt were also made by, by Aboriginal Foundation of Black Americans here because there's a continuity of culture, first sight consciousness. There's a uh, book that goes back to, uh, to 1878. This book is called, is called Music and Some Highly Musical People. It's a history of uh, foundational Black American mu music by James Monroe Trotter. It was first published in 1878. It represents perhaps the first attempt to assess foundational Black American music across multiple genres in a single volume. The cover page, here you can see the cover page of the book. And this was uh, written by uh, James uh, Trotter. He had, he had fought in the Civil War. And uh, he, was a, uh, he was a very, very important person. You know, because see, James Monroe Trotter, Trotter, 1842 to 1892, was born into slavery in Mississippi. His mother escaped with Trotter and his brother via the Underground Railroad, and they settled in Cincinnati, where Trotter became a teacher. He moved to Boston and fought in the Civil War, becoming the first foundational Black American to achieve the rank of second lieutenant. Yes, second lieutenant in the Union Army. He later became the first, first foundational Black American to be employed by the United States Post Office, but resigned in protest when discrimination prevented his promotion. His music and some highly musical people written in 1878 is said to be the first comprehensive study of music written in the United States in 1887. President Cleveland appointed Trotter to the Office of Recorder of Deeds for the District of Columbia, succeeding the great African-American statesman Frederick Douglass in what was then the highest government position to be attained by a foundational Black American. Yes, yes. You see, we have this strong interest in music. We didn't wait for Europeans to write about our music. We wrote about our own music. And that's what we had to do. We had to be independent researchers that want to illustrate our knowledge, illustrate our history. You see, here's a table of contents for, uh, for his book. You know, here we got the uh, description of music, the music of nature, a glance into the history of music, the beauty, power, and uses of music. Then it goes into various, uh, various, you know, uh, great musicians of the uh, period, Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield, the Black Swan, the Luca family. So as you can see, this brother, this brother was recording our music. Yes. Stop it. Stop thinking that foundational Black Americans are always waiting for Europeans, waiting for Caucasians to write our history. We write our own history, we do our own research. This is Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield. She's one of the earliest musicians, you know. She was recognized as a musical sensation in the 1850s. Trotter wrote that I quote, quote, all this was chronicled by the press and formed the theme of constant conversation and correspondence. Many testimonials from persons in this country skilled in music and of fine general culture, as well as others from the Queen of England and several of the English nobility were among her rich possessions and were so great in number and so flattering in character as they have made her almost, if indeed, not altogether an exceptional case. Yes, yes. This woman, in a sense, sang before the queen. She was just that powerful. 
when you see foundational Black American music dominating, in a sense, the the uh, the music played by people around the world, you can see that it didn't just begin last week. It didn't get begin last year. It didn't begin twenty years ago. We see that it's we see that over a hundred years ago. The foundational Black American musicians haven't been influencing the world. American culture is our culture. Richard Kitson wrote a piece on the Negro Music Journal. They had in a book called, on a thing called the, um, the Negro Music Journal that was chronicling our music. J. Hillary Taylor, the journal's founder and only editor, was a pianist, a teacher of, of piano forte and music history, and was associated with the Washington Conservatory of Music. Founded in the autumn of 1903 and located at 12th and U Streets, Northwestern Washington, D.C., Taylor was an extremely conservative musician who extolled the moral virtues of progress in music performance and knowledge through discipline. The practice of the repertory of the European tradition. In fact, in an editorial, the journal cautions readers against the derogatory effects of coon songs and ragtime five and outlines steps for improvement in music for Negroes. Agnes Carroll, a music educator and a frequent contributor, served as assistant and editor. Like Taylor, Carol also based her views about the study of music for Negro students on European tradition. Yes, this is sad, but you can see in a sense how, how we not only had not only had the book by Trotter, but we can see they even made a journal as early as 1903 dealing with our music. You know, one of the one of the, um, the most important uh, scholars today that's dealing with African American music, FBA music, is uh Dwan B. Dwan B, this brother is is in a sense doing the work that we need to really present our music. He made this family tree. And right now he's uh, doing a documentary on FBA music. What 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 Duan B is doing is that he's 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 providing us with the history of our musical traditions. He shows look at all these musical forms on this tree that we made jazz, disco, rock, soul. Look at all these things. And, and we're just so lucky. We're so lucky to have brothers like Dewan B that, that's trying to deal with our family tree. Let me tell you something. Dewan B, he has, in a sense, created a GoFundMe so that he can uh, create, in a sense, more documentaries dealing with not just hip hop, but all aspects of foundational Black Americans. Go to HTTPS colon slash slash gofund.me slash nine little e five little c four three five two go there and donate some money support this brother support support duan b and and bring documentaries that really tell our history of music not not these documentaries made by europeans to make it look as though oh we didn't really create our own music or that it was Europeans who had to influence us. Look at this thing. So you have to know this because see, see, when you really study our music and when you add the when you add the Black Irish into our musical tradition, that explains a lot. It explains how we have always been using so-called European musical forms, but we didn't get these European musical forms from white Europeans, from Caucasians. We got these musical forms from our ancestors. We got these musical forms from our Black Irish ancestors. In conclusion, white people steal our music because they have no culture. Research shows that Black people around the world can have varied heritages, but often we retain continuity and cultural features we first developed as a result of our genetic memories and gaga. Uh, these are references. You know, uh, these references can point you to other information about our, our musical uh, history. And you definitely want to get these slides because they can help you to have a, a greater perspective on the origin of our music and why our music is so important. You see, again, you can go to the, join my Patreon to see the slides. Uh, you can join me on Twitter at Dr. Clyde Winters 8. And you can follow me on TikTok at Clyde Winters 3. Go to TikTok. Support the program. Check out my shorts. You see, uh, you're on my uh, YouTube channel now. Uh, you know, 
touch the uh, the like button. Put a like down for this video. You know that will that will uh, stimulate the uh, the the, uh, the rhythm the uh, rhythmic for the uh, film. And also, you can find my books at Amazon.com. Some of the books that can help you to know about uh, about blacks in America they include Atlantis and Mexico, African empires in ancient America. We are not just Africans. Ancient scripts in South America, the Mandy in ancient America, the Black Mound Builders of America. Check out these books. And you also might want to get my book, you know, where I deal with law and nationality, when I explain the various identities that Europeans have given us and how we arrived at this present identity as foundational Black Americans. You see, come and join our new Black British history. We're going to have a Black history uh, history course. I hope that you guys will join it. You can go to sistershaniegumroad.com. Let's find out about this class, this uh, program. Join Master Teacher Dr. Clyde Winters from the USA and Sister Shanice on an epic journey through hidden chapters of important Black African history in Britain. Brace yourself for an epic journey into uncharted territories with this up and coming groundbreaking online study course. Who is it for? If you are an African history enthusiast, if you are looking for black history material as an educationalist, if you are a parent homeschooling your children about black British history and want to broaden their curriculum with the knowledge that they're not going to acquire in the mainstream, then this course is for you. Black people in Britain have a greater belonging to Britain and the British Isles than you could imagine. Seize your spot on this pioneering course and be part of resurrecting our true history, starting 22nd of January from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Fee £199 and installment payment options are available. For more information, visit Sister Shanice at gumroad.com. Sister, S-I-S-T-A, Shanice at gumroad.com. You got you got to join it now. Join that class. You can learn more about our heritages. Okay, uh, this uh, this Sunday, me and uh, me and uh, Yoshi Ma, we're going to do a program called Then and Now. Uh, as, as you can see, we're going to have the Black Gladiator. I mean, uh, I, I don't like to brag. I don't like to mention the fact that I have been in those confrontational modes. I have had to, in a sense, do a little. Karizana. But you join us every Saturday, I mean every Sunday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to have a program program called Then and Now. And in this program, we're going to talk about all aspects of the culture, then and now. Be one, Black first. Hug your mom. Hug your, hug your father. Hug your loved one. Hug your children. With B1 Black first. Thank you. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the program, and uh, you know, we're uh, you know we're going to uh, talk a little bit. Uh, I uh, you know, Sister Shanice, I'm glad you're here. Darlene next, Dave Jr. You know, uh, a lot of you guys, in a sense, uh, I'm glad you showed up for the uh, program. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. Uh, Yoshi Ma, what up, though? What up, what up, though? <laughs> so, uh, talk to us a little bit about music. I mean, Yoshi Ma, tell us about uh, your, uh, your, your uh, experience in music. Tell us about what you've been doing in Houston, please. Cool, cool, cool. My, y'all can hear me out there? Yes, sirs. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, learning the music with you and, and dealing with this hip hop thing and knowing that the narrative has changed. So listening to your presentation, knowing that the, they heard our music, heard our stories and they're like, well, sure. We can manipulate that because they hold their history in their music. They hold their history in their instruments they hold their history in everything that they touch. So their art, their creation, anything that motivates these people, 
we got to take over it. And if we can take over everything that they hear and see, we can take over their mind and their body and souls. So what they thought um, right now, the music industry has turned for the worse in hip hop. But there are great artists out there that I've heard that um, know the history, per se, and they write it to put it in their stories, to put it in their music. Now, I was talking to a young guy today on, on TikTok. I do a lot of my lives on TikTok, and I was on there doing some music. And one thing is we can easily get on this mic and we can talk about negative this. Just like uh, Dr. Clyde, you mentioned earlier about uh, Dirty Red. I can't say that word before red because ain't nothing sexy about that thing. Um, this is trauma at its best. And what, what we seeing right here is that you can get on a mic and you can spit anything to make people get a giggle and a laugh. Because I think that music in hip hop was, it started off with the knowledge and teaching and elevating. And then it kind of went comical. It went to punchlines, metaphors, not pertaining to intellect. It's just comedy. Um, they they made it comedy in hip hop, and I seen when metaphors was at its peak. That was like in the in in two thousands. You know when you had the Eminem's, the Wayne's. They just hit Styles, Jada. They all hitting metaphorical, metaphorically just hitting it, punchline after punchline. So we looked at it as entertainment. We forgot our source, our power in it, especially in America. We forgot our source. Now, you had people like Prince that was fighting for the uh, 432 Hearst to stay on Radio 1, among other artists who wanted to have their frequency that they create in the studio to be projected. So what they felt and what they delivered is how they want to present it to the world. But where we went with it? Radio One and other stations said, no, we're going to do four to zero. A lot of the dolls that we have out here recording, like Pro Tools, Logic, um, I mean, you name them, Fruit Loops or whatever, their DAW is going to automatically go to four, four, zero. And it's on the artist to think outside that to bring it to their element. So we're I'm talking on a industry level as far as what they did to the music. Let's go to the hood. Let's go to my level as far as me and you. We do music. What you do in the streets will project what goes on on this microphone. So if or I had some cases where people want to fit in with the industry. So instead of being unique and original, they want to be the next Lil Wayne, be the next Drake, and be the next um, uh, uh, future. But a lot of these dudes, first of all, are ghostwriters. A lot of them do drugs to enhance their creative process in that short run. Okay? Exactly. Gangster rap versus conscience. And it's a mix. But what it is is they're mixing... They they're messing up the whole game when you want to be a part of someone like a Drake, a Lil Wayne and them. And you're like, how did they come up with that? A lot of times they got co-writers. A lot of times they got drugs, Percocet, Molly. Come on, man. These people taking enhancements. I mean, they damn near taking crack um, in Houston. Um, we were uh, subgated to uh, permit the zine. All our music in Houston had to have drink in it. So on a lower level, I get somebody from the street coming in, in the studio. If he don't live that lifestyle or she don't live that lifestyle, they're going to portray that lifestyle because that's what sells. Well, guess what? That ain't what I want to hear. That may be what sells, but how are you feeling today? What are you going through today? I can resonate with that more. That's when you come out with a J. Cole and uh, a Andre 3000 and you have these people, they have a, 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 a what's that dude name? Rod Wave. Um, you got these characters out here and they're just speaking their thoughts. Y'all be like, man, it's complex how he wrote that. No, no, no. He, they're just in tune speaking their thoughts. They're receiving it straight. Come on, from the Akashic Records. That's it. All right. That's it. They're just talking. 
and it's good. I love it. Uh, Kendrick Lamar and all that, man, I, I can get a good feel off of some of that stuff, but you always got to know they're in the industry. So it's they're going to have a limit. There's people like me that don't have sponsors. We don't have the backing. So when I came into the music, I wanted to change the narrative. I'm a big fan of Tupac. Man, I was a fan of that dude. Uh, Busy Bone, Crazy Bone, uh, Scarface, um, uh, people with a conscience, um, but not too far off in a conscience where it loses me. Some of these artists, they'll lose me. They'll be speaking that high tech stuff and I'll just be like, da da um, but for the ones who keep it on a, 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 a plain level, I love their music. And, um, I embraced, um, uh, artists like Tupac when they spoke from their soul. So I wanted to change my perspective on hip hop. So I did go through all that street stuff. Yeah. Been in a hood, been in the trap houses, um, you know, seen this, been on the blocks of Farm Park out in Houston on Bissonette. Uh, where I grew up at, Bissonette is a gang and a, um, a prostitution block. Um, I mean, it, it's infested. So I grew up under all this influence and I did go in the studio and, and rap that stuff. I talked that shit. I did. And when you do it, you notice that it brings shit to you, right? Uh, one thing a young artist told me, he said, be careful, young man, what you be saying on that mic because that right there goes a long way. You know what I'm saying? So let's say, for instance, you come in my studio and me and you in the studio, let's do a song about F the world and, and I'm tired and I'm down and out. We'll create that song. It's a very low vibrational song, very low vibrational. The song sounds good because we're going through it. This is some a way for us to vent, all right? We release this song, the song Catch. Guess what? you're going to be stuck singing that low vibrational tune because that's what people are tuned to, right? You're going to get some good fan base, some not. But nobody wants to create a song about murdering and kill. I guess why you're young, uh-huh, because you're playing Grand Theft Auto, but as you get older, then you be like, man, I, I miss when such and such used to rap hard and da 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 now they all switched up. And, no, 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 no. Oh, no. The industry catches you while your conscience is developing. All right. They love getting y'all kid mind uh, cats, man. They get y'all when y'all minds ain't really developed. And then what they put this image in y'all head, they talk about these chains and everything got to fit. And this is what generates the money. But in reality, you generate the money. You are the income. So I learned that in Houston dealing with studio after studio is that there's going to be a lot of people that's going to perpetrate fraud and the real ones that talk about it. All my friends who have spoke on it and who live that life. Yeah. That gangster life. Can you call them for me? None of y'all can because they're, they're, they're my ancestors now. So a lot of my friends who I live with that really rob Jack banging, all that, they, they're gone. My friends are all passed away because of that lifestyle. So, yeah, I'm anti-gang, big time. I seen what it did. I seen when, you know, we learn from this music and we think this the lifestyle and the culture and we teach our kids how to lock C's and lock B's. Yeah, I'm going to teach you what's cracking, look, cuz. What's cracking, my little nigga? Yeah, let's get this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, I seen it. And then they grow up. And it becomes part of them. Man, what's popping? What's cracking? A friend of mine, you know, was uh gang banging, man. And that dude there, we go to the we go to a club spot. He asked me, he say, Man, if it I see a lot of blood in here, man. If it jump off, you got me? I said, nah, bro. I don't bang, I just hang. You signed up for that shit. Not me. I didn't sign up for that. So you're going to live and die by that color. But, you know, that's the thing. I was always one of the ones that said, man, we, we got to change that mind state because I seen how music easily influence people that have a struggle with standing up for themselves. I can't speak on all y'all. If you have a conscience and you're here and you can fan them with Dr. Clyde, say you are here. But to the people that can't, 
Now, there are many people like me and Clyde that's out here that know this knowledge and they manipulate. We don't. We're just like, man, tell the truth. You do what you want to do with it. We put the steak on the plate. If you want to eat a little bit and, and do a little bit here and da 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 da, da that's for you. Yeah, man. Like you said, Queen Latifah and Nas, public enemy, they was all kicking knowledge. Right, right. They was doing it. There were some people that put that knowledge out and put it on the line. And that's with us. We do that. We take our knowledge. All of us, FBA, take our knowledge and put it on the line when we're fed up with being a puppet, right? And then that's when the younger generation be like, sell out. We ain't going for that. So my advice to you young people, change the narrative. Talk about what you want to talk about. Create the visuals you want them to see. You take back the seat. All right. I had a person tell me the other day he don't like reading because uh, uh, he don't believe anybody in the book. Well, then, damn, bro, write a book then. You write the book. You create the narrative. You know the story. Look at Dr. Marie Charles. Look at Dr. Clyde Winters. Come on, man. These people, master researchers. Look at Sister Shanice going in 24 7, writing books. Telling y'all that, yeah, the literature back then, damn this, a lot of it was corrupted because of what they was putting out, not because of what we was putting out. And when we get stuff from their shit, it's documentations. They don't even love us. They'll be like, man, this place is inhabited by Negroid uh, people. I mean, they, they don't, they're not giving us respect. They just documenting the shit and saying how bad we was and, and oh, how we look. But they was the ones. I've been peeping. I've been noticing. Change that narrative. What we want to do with the music now, uh, Dr. Clyde spoke on sampling. So in sampling, you want to be careful who you sample because that is a, a manipulative trick on what they do to us to get us to pay their ass right on back. So let's say, for instance, you sample. Um, I'm going to just throw an artist out there. We're not going to say I know it to be true, but let's say you sample Jackie Wilson and, and Jackie. Oh, I got one better. You sample Sam Cooke. Mm -hmm. You sample Sam Cooke music. Sam Cooke family don't own the rights to the music. You will be paying uh, uh, one of them down the line. You already know what's up. So my advice to y'all be as, as original as y'all can. Bring it back here. Young young folks out there, man, if y'all making that music, make that music for teach, teach something. The story of gangster life and drugs and being a thought has already been told. It's done. That story has been told. Now you can pick an artist on what voice and what personality you want to listen to to tell a drug story, to tell a horror story, to tell a pimp story, to tell. Come on, man. The best have already done it. Nobody has told our story in the best way in hip hop, I believe that took it like all our history. KRS one, I'm with you, brother. Um, we got to link up, but I, I, and, and, and a lot of other guys, I need to link up, but to learn from Dr. Clyde and know the real history, guy, good. Come on, man. Come on. We can take this, but yeah, that's what I want to say, Dr. Clyde. But look, if we, if we take back the industry, what we have to do is, Forget them numbers because numbers lie. I'm going to tell you that in the industry, they play with numbers. Forget them numbers. Do not put your stuff on Spotify and, and, I, and iTunes and all that. Give them a sample. You do unto them what they're doing unto us, okay? So you utilize the game like they're utilizing us. That's why even with this clip right here, we're going to break down this clip, and then we're going to push it out there to gain more views, right, so we can get more people to tune in to kind of help bring this frequency up right so the same thing with the music if you want to support any of my craft become a patreon member man thank you to all the patreon members out there that are supporting me i do this full time i have no sponsors i create videos and create media for a living so if if i'm not creating i don't eat i work to create y'all dreams and make y'all dreams come true. I was talking to Maria Antoinette today and I said, man, Maria, if I can stop thinking about money, I can focus on the goddamn job at hand and I can produce. But a lot of times I got to take up odd jobs that sometimes set me back 
so I can create what I got to create. But what I create is not generating the income that I need right now. So I got to do certain stuff to put it out there. But what I want to leave the y'all with today, I did. I did a video, Dr. Clyde, while we was uh, on while you was on a presentation. I was multitasking. Do you so want to show have, it? Do you yeah, I would it? love to. I would love to. I want to show y'all a video uh, that I did. Um, the video is called Pan African. Uh, y'all don't 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 talk about me because I just did it in a spare moment. But <laughs> that's why you're the genius, it. man. That's why you're the genius. <laughs> I don't call you the genius for nothing. I mean, I feel that. Let me see if I can uh, share the screen with y'all. Right, da, 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 da. Here we go. Okay. I believe it is it sharing y'all. There we go. All right. Let's go. Let's get it. That's Dr. Cloud on that horse. He ready for battle. Let's get it, y'all. I guess it needs to be a little louder. We can't hear it. I wonder. All right, hold up. That's what happened to me last week. I, I wanted to play. Oh. Uh, you want to uh, start it over? Yeah. So y'all really can't hear it, huh? That much, huh? No. Okay. Let me see what I could do. What can I do? You said it was doing that to you last uh, last week? Uh, part of when I was showing the uh, intro, but start it over again and let's see. Okay. Let me see. Because I'm trying to see what's up. Let me see if I got the volume. I got it up right here. All right. Let's see. That's not loud, huh? Uh uh. Oh, shucky ducky, quack quack. Y'all ever heard that phrase? Uh, 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 do you think? Do you think the uh? Yeah, I got everything up. Oh wow. Mm, they playing games. Let me try another song. Let me see if this just that. All right, let me look. Hold on. Let's try this. Can y'all hear that? No. No, y'all can't hear that neither, huh? Okay, let me see something. So let me think. If this is hooked up to here, I apologize, y'all. But look, is if y'all... Is it on your website? Uh, No, I just did this song right, right, right now. Literally. Okay. <laughs> hey look y'all check this out y'all go to my patreon and y'all tap in and y'all become a member and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna send this to y'all okay so i'm i'm gonna send this directly to everybody up on my patreon account just join in for a dollar y'all to get it i had i we got to figure out the um uh technical difficulties up on this end to figure out exactly how to pres uh present my stuff did, uh, did you want to do the cloud did you want to do the cloud? How you do that? You know your the one you wrote called the cloud. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see if that'll Let's work. Let's see if that'll Let play. That's low. Let me see if that'll work. If not, I'll put it on my uh let me see right here. Because it's loud in my ear. Let me see if I could play it on my uh go to present and you know, let's see. All right. Okay, let me see. Well, we'll uh, we can't hear that one either. But uh, can't hear it. Uh, 
Okay, this is what we'll do, uh, family. Is that uh, uh, next? Uh, That's crazy. On, you know, again on Sunday. On Sunday, we're gonna be uh, Sunday. We're gonna do our first show. We're gonna have this stuff. Uh, we're gonna have this stuff. Uh, you know, worked out by by uh, Sunday evening. So I want to thank everybody for uh, coming, visiting. I just want to uh, show you a couple more uh, slides. A couple more slides that we can uh, end this thing. And I want you to uh, really think about, you know, joining uh, joining the class, and uh, because uh, if you join the class, you can learn a lot about Black history. So uh, really think about uh, joining the class. from the USA and Sister Shanice on an epic journey through hidden chapters of important Black African history in Britain. Brace yourself for an epic journey into uncharted territories with this up and coming groundbreaking online study course. Who is it for? If you are an African history enthusiast, if you are looking for Black history material as an educationalist, if you are a parent homeschooling your children about black British history and want to broaden their curriculum with knowledge that they're not going to acquire in the mainstream, then this course is for you. Black people in Britain have a greater belonging to Britain and the British Isles than you could imagine. Seize your spot on this pioneering course and be part of resurrecting our true history, starting 22nd of January from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Fee £199 and installment payment options are available. For more information, visit Sister Shanice at Gum Road. Dot com. Sister, S-I-S-T-A, Chilis at gumroad.com. At Yoshi Productions, we are here to take your brand and creativity to new heights. From EPKs to AI commercials, animated music commercials to animated AI bios, book covers to picture flyers, and so much more. Can you hear that? Our team is dedicated to delivering high quality, cutting edge designs that leave yeah. impression. And for our valued clients, we offer exceptional creativity, a customer centric approach, and work that reflects the latest trends and technologies. Just about making art, we're about creating experiences. Your brand, your vision, our artistry. Professionalism and reliability are the cornerstones of everything we do. We're more than a service to your creative partners. If you're ready to make your brand shine, look no further than Yoshimod Productions. Y'all come to me, man. Y'all come to me. I got y'all. Join us in the journey of creativity. Travel abroad. We got this. Contact us today and let's make your vision a reality. Yeah, it works good on your end. On my end, uh, we're gonna have to figure that out. You know, we'll be ready again. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming up uh, this Thursday. I'm gonna do. I'm still gonna keep my history programs every Thursday. I'm sorry you won't see, you won't see this handsome brother next week, but you will see him on Sunday. Come to our come to our new program, and that program is gonna be called what? It's gonna be mm -hmm. called Then and Now. Mm -hmm. You're gonna find it to be super. You're gonna find it to be supportive. Right now, you know, I, I want you guys to have a great day. Black Lyron, all the way free. Uh, Karen Benzin, Joan, Joan Coromonte, all you guys. See you next Thursday. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye.